Oh, hello, welcome back to Telling the Time Review. This video is going to focus on how we tell the time in five minute intervals. In the last video we reviewed the two sides of our clock, the minutes past and the minutes to side, as well as looking at the four main points around our clock, our o'clock, half past, quarter past and quarter two. This time we're going to focus on how do we tell the time in five minute intervals, uh, looking at the minutes past an hour or the minutes to an hour. So we've got our clock and on our clock we have our main large numbers. These represent our hours. And our hour hand is a shorter hand because it only needs to be able to point to these large numbers, not to the actual individual minutes. Our minute hand is long because it needs to be able to point to the minutes that are ticking around the outside of our clock. So as you can see, these little dashes around the outside of the clock, they are our minutes. When our long hand is pointing to the one, or our minute hand is pointing to the one, it's not actually representing one minute past an hour. This one actually represents five minutes because from our 12 to our one, we have ticked past one, two, three, four, five minutes. And it's past because we're on our past side of the clock. So when the long hand or the minute hand is pointing to the 12, no minutes have passed the hour. As we move around our large numbers, the hour numbers, they're actually representing our minutes past. And we know from just previously that the one represents five minutes. As we keep moving around the clock, we keep counting in lots of five because between each hour number, there are five individual minutes. One, two, three, four, five. So when we reach the two, the two actually represents 10 minutes past the hour. 15 minutes past, 20, 25, and 30 minutes past. We've looked at previously in the previous video that this is actually half past because we moved halfway around the clock. Now we can look at our minutes two side of the clock. Just like we've looked at with our minutes past, counting in lots of five, we do the same thing on our minutes two, but this time we're thinking about how far does the minute hand have to go until it gets to the next hour or the next lot of minutes, which is back at the 12. So how far does it need to move? So here we can see, just like we were before, we can count in lots of five. We've got one, two, three, four, five minutes to go until we get to the 12. So the 11 really represents five minutes to the next hour. And again, 10, pointing to the large 10, we have 10 minutes to go. 15 minutes to go, 20 minutes, or 25. So we still need to understand our minutes past and our minutes two sides of the clock. We need to remember that the large numbers around the clock are our hours, but they also represent lots of five minutes. And we can count by fives from the 12 for past. Or we need to think about how many minutes to go till the long hand or the minute hand gets back to the 12. 